Hi everyone, today we're going to be creating a predator prey game with foxes and rabbits and we're going to be using Scratch to make this game and hey if you're new to Scratch and you need a refresher, perhaps you want to check out my learn to code videos on YouTube which will get you up to speed pretty quickly and I suggest that you subscribe and follow me because I'll be uploading videos fairly regularly. Anyways, let's get started on our predator prey game. So I'm already at Scratch, I'm going to hit the create button. Um, if a tutorial pops up, you can exit the tutorial because I'm doing it today and say goodbye to the cat. So I'm going to hit the garbage can, goodbye cat. I'm going to get a backdrop that works with foxes and rabbits. And the one I think works best is forest. Maybe there's a better one, but that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to get two sprites. I'm going to get a fox sprite and I'm going to get a rabbit sprite or a hare sprite. Um, where are they? There's the hair right there. So there's the hair. I'm going to shrink him. He's awfully big. I'm going to make him a lot smaller, maybe 40%. That's good. Now I'm going to get a fox sprite. Because foxes eat rabbits. And it's part of our ecosystem right there. I'm also going to make him a little bit smaller, maybe like 80%. Ah, still too big, maybe 60%. There we go, perfect. So foxes and rabbits. So let's start coding the fox first because the fox is the predator and he's gonna be chasing uh, the rabbit and trying to get some dinner for himself. So watch how I code the fox. I think you're gonna like this one. Um, when the green flag is clicked, first of all, I want him to go to zero, zero. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see at home or at school, wherever you happen to be working. So I'm on the fox now. When the green flag is clicked, go to the middle of the screen. So go to zero, zero. That's the center of the screen, as we know. Perfect. Now, I want him also pointing in that direction. So um, when the game starts, he's always looking over this way. So I'm going to go point in direction 90, which is the way he's looking now. He's looking towards the right. Um, and now we're going to set it up so that when you hit the arrow keys up, down, left or right, he moves in those directions. And we're going to use the pro gamer coding for this one, even though it takes a little bit longer, but not much. So I'm going to get another green flag. And I'm going to get an if statement. If, if, right there. If the right arrow key is being pressed, so right arrow key, this is in the sensing function or sensing area when uh, the right arrow key is pressed. So I'm going to grab that one and drag it in there and drop it. If the right arrow key is being pressed, change X by 10. Change X by 10. Change X by 10 and point in a direction 90 because if he's going in another direction, we want him to turn back in this direction. So if the right arrow key is pressed, then point in direction 90 and change X by 10. Let's just test it out. Ready? Right arrow key, uh, green flag, right arrow key. Oh, I forgot to put a forever around it. So forever check to see if the right arrow key is being pressed. So forever right there. So green flag. Right arrow key, perfect. Now I'm going to do the same for the left arrow key. So I'm going to get another if touching. If touching the left arrow key, change x by negative 10 and point in direction um, negative 90, I think. Um, change x by negative 10 and point in direction negative 90. There we go. Ready? Green flag, right and left. Okay, he's upside down, but at least he's pointing in the right direction. So I'm going to be happy with that for today. Right and left. Perfect. Now I'm going to code the same thing for up and down. So up arrow key, uh, change Y by 10 and uh, point in direction 0. Uh, down arrow key, point um, in 180 direction and change Y by negative 10. So I'm just going to pause and finish coding the fox to move up, down, left, and right, and then we'll move on to the next part. So I'm just going to pause here for a minute so you can catch up and code your fox to move up, down, left, and right. All right, welcome back. So I've coded my fox to move left, right, up, and down, left, right, up, and down. Great. Nice. And he's pointing in the right direction. And there's my code for that. If you get stuck, you can always take a peek at that. Now let's code the rabbit to make 15 clones of themselves because in this ecosystem there's lots of rabbits um, and very few foxes. So I'm going to make 15 clones of the rabbit. So I'm going to go to the rabbit 
And when the green flag is clicked, make a clone of myself and repeat 15 times. Create clone of myself, repeat uh, 15 times. There we go. So make 15 rabbits. Great. And when I start as a clone, of course, go to a random spot. And let's see if the fox catches him. So when I start as a clone, go to a random position. And then if I'm touching the fox, I should hide. So if the rabbit touches a fox, he should hide. So if, 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 on uh, the controls, if touching rabbit, touching is in the senses, touching, I'm sorry, touching the fox, if touching the fox, then hide. And that's under the looks button. And I'm going to put a forever loop around it because it's always checking to see if he's being eaten by the fox in this predator play prey ecosystem. So when I start as a clone, go to random position. And if touching the fox, then hide. So let's try that. Ready? Green flag. Good. There's 15 rabbits. And when I touch them, they all hide. Great. If I can catch them. There we go. So. I'm going to pause there and let you catch up with the rabbit. And again, I made 15 clones of myself, ran a position, and if touching fox, hide. So do the rabbit, and I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so now we're going to set it up so that the rabbit reproduces over and over again, and so there's more baby rabbits. So watch how I do that. I'm going to get more clones. So we've repeated 15 clones of ourselves already. So I'm going to wait maybe five seconds and then have more clones appear. So um, repeat instead of maybe five, uh, 10 times, I'm going to do eight times this time. So repeat eight times, make a clone of myself. Now I'm going to do it again. So we're going to wait again. We're going to wait, um, uh, let's say, four seconds. And we're going to make two clones. Like that. Repeat twice. Uh, make two clones. There we go. So, um, the rabbits are appearing more and more. But of course, the fox is also eating the rabbits. So, as we eat the rabbits, there's more appearing. But each time, there's just a fewer amount appear. So, the, ra the fox is uh, draining the ecosystem of all the prey that there is in the, in the, in the forest. So, we set up so that at first there's 15 rabbits and then eight rabbits appear, and then only two rabbits appear, they're getting less and less. Meanwhile, the fox is growing its family. There's more and more foxes because there's more predators because of all the food that's available. So now let's pause. I'm just going to let you code the rabbit. And when you're done, we're going to uh, finish coding the fox. Okay, as the hairs get more and more uh, depleted, there's more and more foxes appear at the beginning. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate the fox. So two fingers on a touchpad and duplicate. And I'm going to have him also be moved around. But instead of arrows, we're going to use ASWD. So right arrow is a D. Move 10 steps. Left arrow is um, an A. The up arrow is the W. I have to go all the way down here. And the down arrow is the S. So now I can control the second fox using the ASWD letters. And let me just test that out. Ready, green flag, go. ASWD. But you know what? I don't want that second fox to appear right away. Because at first, this fox family is growing because of all the rabbits. So I want the second fox to appear after only a little while. So look, instead of um, repairing right away, I'm going to make him wait about seven seconds. You'll have to figure out all the timings which work best for you in your game. I'm going to make him wait about about seven seconds before the second one appears. Ready? Green flag and go. Whoops. I should make them hide first of all. So at the beginning, hide. Wait seven seconds and then show yourself. And then the second fox is in play. Ready? Green flag. Good. So I'm eating all the rabbits and plentiful amount of food. So second fox appears. And the second fox also moves around using ASWD. Perfect. So, can you now please duplicate the fox and make the second fox movable by using the ASWD keys? Make that second fox hide for seven or eight seconds and then show itself before it starts eating all of the rabbits. So, I'm just going to pause there while you do the second rabbit. 
All right, I hope that's going well for you. Now that we have a second fox uh, on the scene, we have to code it so that if the hair touches a second fox, that the hairs also disappear. So I'm gonna go back to the hair, and I'm gonna get another if. If touching fox number two, then hide. So if, and sensing is over here, touching fox number two, fox two, then hide. And if they're hiding, I'm always going to put a show. So I'm going to put a show at the beginning when you start as a, as a clone right there. So um, we should have our foxes and our rabbits um, on, in our ecosystem. And just one last thing. When the uh, foxes uh, are eating all the rabbits, they're also having more children or baby foxes. So I'm gonna get three more foxes. I'm gonna shrink them to 30% so they look like baby foxes. And I'm gonna code all of the baby foxes to hide and wait for 13 seconds and then show themselves in the center. And then all I did with the baby foxes is just have them glide for four seconds to a random spot. So you can see the baby foxes are just gliding. So let me show you one more time how this game works. So green flag. So there's one fox and many rabbits. So lots of prey, one predator. As the fox eats the rabbits, of course there's more rabbits, but less and less each time. And there's more and more foxes appearing. So you can see the foxes appearing, and now the baby foxes are there, and there's almost no rabbits left. All of the predators have eaten all of the prey. So now there's lots of foxes, but not many rabbits. And that's what we want to demonstrate in this game, and eventually they all disappear as well. So... I hope you like that one. If you have any trouble, please look at my code again. You're going to have to spend some time working on the the uh, how long everything waits before they show and hide. But this is a demonstration of the ecosystem and how predator prey works uh, in this forest ecosystem. Hope you like that one. I'm looking forward to seeing you at our next activity. Thank you.